Jean-Claude, looking barely older than the freshman from the lecture hall, had driven Morby the four hours it had taken to get to the dig site and knew only that the American was good friends with his boss. He was a little bewildered now, watching the two men wrestling with such profound emotion. Regardez les coups, tu vois? Morby whispered. Look at the neck, see? Red, Beauchamp nodded, answering in heavily accented English. All soft organic matter had been leached away by the greedy demands of the soils and their denizens, though in return the bones had been gifted minerals that had helped preserve them. Whatever might have been looped across the wolf's neck had been lost forever, but the ferrous oxide that had decorated that loop still remained, a thread of dusky red, just as it appeared in the cave painting. What is it? A wolf or a dog? Jean-Claude asked, mimicking the quiet tones of the other men. A wolf, but also a dog, Beauchamp murmured. No, Morby corrected after a moment. Not a dog. The dog. He turned to Jean-Claude. You found the very first dog. Jean-Claude contemplated this. Morby wondered if the young man saw what Morby saw, what Beauchamp saw, fossil evidence of a turning point in human history. No, to mimic the sentence structure he'd just used, not a turning point, the turning point, when we went from enduring to prevailing. But then who is the man? There must be a reason why he's buried with the dog. Morby stood, his knees snapping back into position. He slapped his palms on his sides, raising dust in the afternoon sun. Well, yes, you raise a very interesting point, Morby agreed. I have spent so much of my career pondering how it is possible that wolves evolved into our friends and companions, evolution being the glacial process that it is, but suppose we look at it in a different way. How did we humans go from being preyed upon by wolves to living with them? From wolf food to dog masters, if you will. Now you're talking adaptation instead of evolution. Now you're not talking centuries. You're talking a single generation. The life of one person. Twenty years, let's call it. So, Jean-Claude, you ask an important question. A very important question indeed. Who is the man?